Charlie here. Where are you? What are you up to? I'm out on the track showing this roadrunner who's boss. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. No, 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 no. I'm like a full lap ahead of you. Like, like, like two. It's just because I was moving so fast. I was such a blur you didn't notice. Beep, beep. Come on, you gotta get moving. What are you, my coach? I might as well be. School starting nearly two weeks, and we have to get the first video communication to our family. Let's go! Race it back. Beep, beep. I'm gonna win ya I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you One way or another I'm gonna see ya I wanna meet ya, meet ya, meet ya, meet ya One day, maybe next week I'm gonna meet ya I'm gonna meet ya, I'll meet ya Have to walk Besides, I smoked it anyway Beep, 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 beep How did you... This isn't over. Hello students, families, and staff. I'm Principal Charlie Jett, and welcome to Howard Elementary School for the 2023-24 school year. I'm super excited to be joining you as your principal for this coming year. I'm looking forward to getting to know you and embark on an incredible learning journey together. This is the first in what is planned to be a series of videos for this year. Some will be informative, some will be educational, some may be musical, but most will feature outstanding and talented guests who are sure to thrill us with their knowledge and expertise. This first video covers the important back-to-school information in our first Roadrunner Report newsletter, which is linked in the description below. Before we get started, be sure to press those like and subscribe buttons and turn on notifications so you can be sure to get the latest news, updates, and new learning happening here on the channel. Well, let's dive in and get ready for back to school. Okay, Howard, families, students, and staff, here we are at the Roadrunner Report, our first edition. And uh, we want to just go through a few salient points here. You are all educated people, and I feel we can we can read this, and you can take your time to do it. But I do want to touch on a few specific points to make sure we're all on the same page here to just make sure that we start the school in a very positive way. So this video is chunked up into specific sections of this newsletter. And if you just want to skip ahead, go to the description below and jump to the timestamp for the information that you want to hear. And you can go back and forth and see whatever sections you would like. All right, so here we go. Let's dive on in. Obviously, welcome back, families. I've already introduced myself. I'm Principal Jett, and we have our new secretary here at Howard, Becky Lamb. She's here in the front office working along with our bilingual front office assistant, Elizabeth Grego, and uh, they're ready to support you in anything that you need to do, particularly with enrollment. Enrollment is happening now. We want to make sure students are ready to go to school on the first day, and uh, those first days are for kindergarten, Wednesday, September 6th. Only kindergarten, just kindergarten will come on Wednesday, uh, September 6th. And then the first through the fifth graders will come on Thursday, September 7th. And this is important because we have a brand new smart start for kindergarten this year. You can see, see over here, we have this graphic. All of the kindergartners are going to come on this first day, Wednesday, September 6th. But then the subsequent days is going to be broken up by alphabet. So students with last names A through L will only come on Thursday the 7th. And students with last names M through Z will come on Friday the 8th. And then also the students with last names A through L on the 11th. And only students with those names M through Z on the 12th. But all the kinders come back on the 13th. 
And then the 14th and the 15th, none of the kindergartners would come to school because we are going to be really strategically making the class lists for kindergarten. Our kindergarten teachers are going to work really hard uh, to make sure we really purposefully place our students with specific teachers and with different student combinations. And also, uh, there are going to possibly be parent conversations on this day. We'll know more about what that will look like in the coming uh, week or so, uh, if there needs to be specific information to help support your child. So this is specific information for kindergarten. Remember, first through fifth graders, you are coming on the seventh and you come every day after that. Uh, all the kindergartners and all students will be here on the 18th and it's regular school. So I hope that really kind of sums up the way that we're doing the smart start. Class lists. Uh, class lists will come out on Friday, September 1st. We're going to be sending out emails from students, teachers, but we will post them outside the school. This way you know uh, which teacher your student is going to be served by. Again, this is just first through fifth grade. Kindergarten, we will learn through the, the smart start. But that way you can come to meet your teacher. Meet your teacher event is going to be on Tuesday, September 5th. That's the day before school, right after Labor Day, where you can drop off school supplies and uh, meet your teacher to around the school a little bit. That will happen from three to four and uh, super, super fun. And then some time open on the playground after four o'clock, we might have some neat food service com coming. We're still locking that down. Uh, so if we maybe have some snow cones or some other food trucks, uh, maybe keep your, your bellies empty a little bit uh, if we want to en engage in any of that. So that's gonna be really fun for meet your teacher and meet me and uh, other staff members as well. So super, super fun. All right, our morning drop off and afternoon pickup procedures. I do want to talk about this really, really carefully. So I'm going to link to the slideshow that's up here and uh, we can all go through this and make sure we're very, very clear on how this goes so that we can be very, very safe. So our student safety is paramount here at Howard Elementary and it's a team effort for all of us to ensure that our students and everybody else, families, community members are safe during these arrival and dismissal times with peak traffic. So we need to be safe, responsible and kind. And that means being very slow, parking only in designated areas, watching out for others and really being aware of our surroundings. We wanna make sure we're only using designated spaces and using them correctly and arriving on time being at school and as I'll talk about later is really important we want to be on time so we can maximize student learning let our front office know if pickup changes by 1 30 on Mondays Tuesdays Thursdays and Fridays and by 12 15 on Wednesdays and please be kind for others that's looking out for others and knowing that pickup is especially busy and requires patience and understanding so park and escort drop off in the morning. This is really for students who need some extra help exiting the vehicle, or if you're a family and students who want to hug and talk a little bit before coming into the school, uh, if you want to watch while your student enters the school, parents or preschool families who don't ride the bus, it's really important that you park in a parking space and walk into the building. Do not park in the drop off loop and block the traffic. And so what this looks like is making sure you park here in these designated spaces. Do not park in this drop off loop here. We will make some videos to really show what this looks like uh, specifically, but I think you can see from this map that we want to make sure that we are keeping this flow of traffic moving. And if you're going to take some time getting in and out of a vehicle or helping a little one, we want to park and escort. The drive through is for students who can exit the vehicle quickly and independently, and you can say goodbye relatively quick. Hey, have a great day. See you later. It's all good. Um, and you need to remain in your car, parents, and make sure that students get out of their car close to the side of the school. Do not exit where cars could potentially pass. We certainly don't want any accidents, uh, accidents happening as students are getting out of their vehicles. And if you're coming through for the drop off, you must go through the actual drop off lane. Do not come and start dropping off where parents are coming to park and escort their students because we have a lot of pedestrians. Again, we have a lot of littles who need help getting out of cars. So it really is helpful to mind going through this pickup and drop off lane and avoiding the parking lot if you are dropping off in the morning. Face-to-face -face pickup. So after school, face-to-face -face pickup is for preschool, kindergartners, and first graders. This is required. So families, if you have a preschool or kindergartner or first grader, you must come and uh, pick up your child. So that means you park in a parking space and you walk up and meet your child and, and you see face-to-face -face with the teacher and hand them off. 
Uh, second and fifth graders who need help buckling or getting into a car as well, need face-to-face -face pickup, uh, or who want to socialize for a while after school, if we know that as well. We can't have families coming into that drop-off lane or pickup lane and waiting and parking and getting out of cars. It just causes serious congestion out onto Howard Avenue as well. So uh, park in designated parking spots and do not park in the loop and meet your student's teacher at the designated pickup spot. Here's the picture of how this looks like. So again, we wanna be parking and not uh, parking in the pickup lane. And you will meet your child at a designated area in the front of the school, typically one of these pillars that has uh, our teacher's names on it specifically for their classes. So again, the drive through pickup is for second through fifth graders only who can really responsibly enter the car themselves and buckle quickly. They need to get into the side of the car that's uh, right facing the school. They can't go around the car, potentially step into traffic. So you want to make sure that that line, lane is moving, that we are avoiding congestion. And these are responsible students who are not taking time to socialize and, and they can see their vehicle, identify their parent, family member and get in the car and we can be safely on our way. And that's what that looks like here is we want to make sure that we are waiting, waiting. And then all the pickup actually happens right over here on, uh, on the east side of the pickup zone. So when you're here in your cars, families and parents, you're kind of waiting. We can't stop the vehicle and get out and run and go get the child. All the children will be waiting here with teachers and they will quickly get into vehicles as they pull up. Getting back here to our newsletter, uh, I'm going to go through some of these pretty quickly. It makes a lot of sense. We have free uh, breakfast and lunch for students, and there's a menu that's available on the Eugene 4J School District website uh, that's linked here. We do have, we're allergy cognizant, so we do have a nut-free table in the cafeteria to ensure that students who have those allergies are removed from anybody potentially wanting to bring uh, lunches with, with nuts, peanut butter, etc., we want to be on time for school, right? Everybody wants to be on time. It's great practice. We need to be on time for our jobs. We need to be prompt. But sometimes lateness happens. And if we're late, we want to make sure we come to the front office and we sign in, we get a pass, and we can go to our classes. Let's make this first week, first few weeks, let's get these routines down, students and families, so that we're here because every single minute of instruction counts. It's amazing how much can be built up by lost instruction time. And the more that we miss, it just compounds. We need to be here. We need to be at school. And school's a fun place to be and a welcoming and inclusive and just a place where we all, all belong. So let's make sure that if we are late, that it happens on an infrequent basis and that we're coming to the front office to make sure that we can get into class in a timely manner. And then parents, if you have messages for students at all, uh, we want to make sure that those are delivered in a timely manner to the front office. Uh, don't just put them in a student's backpack and we want to call the office, let us know if a student is being picked up by somebody else, for example, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we know where all students need to be after school. And if there's an emergency situation, uh, let us know who's, how they're going to be getting home or anything to that effect so that we can support you. I've already touched on this. This is very important, but student attendance matters every single day. You'll be hearing me talk about this throughout the year frequently, and we'll be looking at student attendance data uh, about the frequency of absences, and we certainly do not want students to be absent unless they're legitimately sick. If we're sick, we cannot be at school, um, But we, and if we're having pervasive illness, we'll see what we can do with our human services coordinator uh, to support families in any way of getting that medical attention because we want students to be healthy and here at school and learning. Bus stops. If you need to help find your child's bus stop, there's a link here and you can put in your address and you'll see where your bus stop is. Uh, the district is giving LTD transit passes to students, which is really very exciting. We want to make sure that students can get around. The link to the school supply list is here. There's a link right here. And I uh, really appreciate you getting a number of those items to support our students. We have a wonderful event being hosted here at elementary on Sunday, August 27th, and that is Project Hope. The way to sign up for Project Hope and get tickets is through this link in the newsletter. It's also linked in the description of this video below, this 2023howard.eventbrite.com. Uh, also, there is a link to the flyer, and uh, it's a very wonderful event. Students can get backpacks with supplies, shoes, clothes, uh, haircuts if they need them in half an hour increments. So you want to make sure you get those tickets and, and sign up to be able to attend.
Here are the Howard staff assignments for this coming year. We got an amazing staff. They're going to be doing an incredible job. All our teachers at preschool, uh, kindergarten, first grade, second, et cetera, as well as our specialists. I'm so excited to get to know them and work with them and continue our own collective professional learning together uh, so that we can deliver the evidence-based practices, the most recent research in terms of instruction to enhance our students' learning outcomes, all of our students' learning outcomes. Our parent teacher organization, our PTO, is getting up and running here uh, this fall. They're going to have their first meeting on Tuesday, September 12th at 6 p.m. in the library. They are going to meet the second Tuesday of every month here at Howard in the library at 6 o'clock. And we certainly want participation. We love your input. All families can attend and provide their input on events and other neat experiences that we want to provide our students. Our PTO is going to be starting with a fundraiser here on uh, September 27th. It's all day at the Papa's Pizza on West 11th Avenue. So it's a great way that they can fundraise. But we also, and this is not mentioned right here in this bulletin, but I want to make a plug for our school site council. Uh, our school site council will meet once a month. And right now it, we're planning for it to, a, to be about five o'clock on the days, on these second Tuesdays of every month before the PTO. And we need a couple of parent reps or family uh, representatives to to uh, be on that team to see what's happening with the whole school and our school's uh, continuous improvement plan or SKIP. And that's a really influential team that looks at what we're doing instructionally and what's happening in classrooms and what we can do to support all students, uh, not just academically, but behaviorally as well, and our school climate and culture. And so that's a really big piece of that. And then School Site Council also reports to PTO. So you can come to PTO meetings and hear about all the different teams and what we're doing to make an impact with our students. We do have a cell phone policy here, and it's important to read through this. Of course, we understand this time and age, parents and families want to be able to get in touch with their students, but we ask that they be off and away during school hours or put away and not distracting because there's whole sorts of apps. I'm guilty myself. I've got all kinds of apps on my phone and all that that are really fun to play with, but that is a real distraction for learning. And so we want to make sure that our devices are off and away, unless the teacher has an innovative, neat activity or something that involves those devices, but the teacher will let you know far in advance if that is to take place. We have a dress code. Please re read through that. We want to make sure that students are wearing appropriate shoes, appropriate clothing, again, not distracting or in any way offensive to anybody. We want to be cognizant of the logos and what we're wearing um, to ensure that we are promoting an inclusive environment where all students and staff and families feel like they belong. Ah, personal items. This one's really, really hard. I know we get sometimes for our birthday or certain, certain other presents and all that. It's things that we're really excited about students and we want to bring them to school and show our friends. But the thing of it is, those can, again, be very distracting to learning and we don't want to lose them because it could be, oh my gosh, you got this really neat thing and somebody over here maybe would want to take it. And then we're really, really sad. And that's really, 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 really disappointing. Or when we have lots of cards, when I was a child, baseball cards were a big thing and some other types of things. Pokemon cards are really big. I cannot tell you in my experience as a principal and administrator how many times students were saying they were trading Pokemon cards, but they really didn't want to trade it. They felt pressured by somebody into trading their card and they want it back. And then that's a problem because those cards or those new, those fun toys and things are now at some other student's house. So we should leave all these things at home. Leaves all, leave all the little things at home, unless you have a little fidget, something that you're going to keep in the pocket and the teacher knows about. And, or if we're doing a sharing day, teachers communicated that something can come to school. Otherwise, we should not be bringing toys and other objects, Pokemon cards or any other things in our backpacks. We should be bringing things that help us learn. And if they are Pokemon cards and we're trading a whole bunch, we got to watch out because Mr. Jet needs to catch them all. More about student safety and how students get to and from school. Our Safe Routes to School program does a number of events, and there's a flyer right down here on how to learn to ride a bike. That is going to be on Tuesday, August 29th, and you can stop by anytime at the uh, school district's office on 200 North Monroe Street between 4.30 and 6.30. 
Um, but this program really helps us look at safety, getting to and from school and traffic patterns and how students walk. And this is a, a school where students can walk to and from school as well as getting picked up and we have bussers. So it's just important that we are monitoring that and we work with our liaison and, and that's something that we can be talking about at school at council meetings and PTO meetings. And if anybody has questions about school safety coming to and from school. So let's be sure to stay connected, families. It's really important that we develop a partnership because it takes a village to support our students. Our teachers are working really, really hard along with our classified staff, our nutrition services, our custodians. Everyone is working really, really hard together and we need to be in communication. We do have a lot of social media presence. We have our website, we have our Facebook page, we have Instagram, and we are able to communicate through our Synergy system. Teachers are using Seesaw and of course, this YouTube channel, which we will build up over time. So please be sure to subscribe and look for notifications on all those platforms so that you know the latest of what's happening here at Howard. And we welcome your input. This is your community neighborhood school. We want to make sure that this is a safe, inclusive, welcoming environment that all students, staff, families feel like they belong in every single day. So to summarize, a lot of activities are happening. We have Project Hope here on August 27th at one o'clock, the Meet Your Teacher event and the PTO meeting, and of course the fundraiser at Papa's Pizza on the 27th. So we hope to see you at all of those. It's going to be a wonderful year. Students, family members, and staff, I can't wait for what lies ahead this year. Beep, beep. Neither can this character. Let's partner together and make it the best year possible. I'm in. Estoy lista. We're off and running. Until next time, I'm Principal Jet. That is the Roadrunner, and this is the Principal's Office. I'm not sure what we're going to learn next, but let's learn it together. Be safe, be responsible, and kind. Jet and Roadrunner out. Yeah.